completion of the flight test program at Edwards Air Force Base has added an another successful chapter to the story of man's conquest of the air. In order to demonstrate the capabilities of the X-13 to groups of high-level military and civilian personnel, the Vertijet was moved to Washington, D.C. for operations at Andrews Air Force Base and from the Pentagon building. Now on this morning of July 30th, 1957, we are a part of a group assembled before the river entrance of the Pentagon to witness a complete vertical takeoff and landing flight demonstration of the X-13. To emphasize the importance of this event, Lieutenant General Donald L. Putt, Deputy Chief of Staff for Development, Headquarters, United States Air Force, steps to the microphone and says, This is an unusual and memorable occasion. Exactly 48 years ago today, the first military airplane was accepted by the Aeronautical Division of the Office of the Chief Signal Officer, United States Army. Today we commemorate that historical flight. The Ryan X-13 Vertijet, which we are about to witness in flight, is the world's first fixed-wing turbojet aircraft capable of rising from its vertical tail-sitter position, convert to normal horizontal flight, and then return to a vertical position for landing. The performance of the X-13 is so remarkable that to some, seeing is not quite believing. But I believe we are witnessing a trend of things to come. A control system had to be developed to stabilize and control the aircraft while hovering and flying at low speed before the normal aerodynamic controls became effective. While the X-13 is not a combat aircraft, I am sure the advantages inherent in a combat airplane that would combine the vertical performance of the helicopter and the horizontal flight performance of the conventional jet aircraft are quite obvious to all. In addition to the aerodynamic controls found in all conventional jet aircraft, the X-13 is equipped with a jet reaction control system. This method was necessitated by the obvious lack of normal airflow over the aerodynamic control surfaces at extremely low speeds. The principle behind jet reaction control is basically quite simple. Necessary control forces are developed by jet engine exhaust deflection and thrust, or throttle variation. The efficiency of this system is demonstrated by the facility with which the X-13 automatically maintains the vertical attitude. Precision of control is graphically displayed as the pilot easily executes the maneuvers required to take off and land over the hazards of underbrush, water, trees, and building installations. Jet reaction control and the nose hook takeoff and landing technique, both developed by Ryan engineers, are the keys to successful jet VTOL flight. Use of the nose hook eliminates the need for landing gear and associated doors, actuators, and accessory equipment. Converting this weight saving to additional power results in an increase of from 20 to 35 percent in total thrust at takeoff. General Pratt emphasizes some of the operational advantages of the jet VTOL aircraft. The elimination of the need for large areas for airfields and long runways, the capability for easy dispersal and greatly increased mobility are just a few of the advantages to be gained. Though there are still many unsolved problems, we have established the feasibility of jet VTOL aircraft, and operational planners may now include this capability in their plans for manned aircraft of the future.